this thing's dark more here is a set order once and for all in the galaxy. May the fourth be with you. This is a special edition of Train Simulator. And today, we're going to be operating a Class 460 Juniper, aka the Dark Fable. We'll be ready for this, because we're about to go where no train has gone before in a railroad far, far away. God damn it. Can't breathe with that thing on. Do you want us to go to the store like this? Anyway, so this is a class 460 Juniper, which earned its name the Darth Vader. The Darth Vader for very obvious reasons. This is the front end of it. And it's actually pretty cool. I think that it's a certain kind of weird that you only see in Great Britain because you don't see this often in like places like America and stuff like that, the closest you'll get is like the bright line. And they don't got anything like this. So I kind of like how this looks. It kind of has a bit of like a cone nose going on, but its sides obviously are very EMU-ish, what you would typically see in a British EMU. And I think this particular car has a baggage door that's what that door is here for. And the rest of the train, you know, our regular passenger compartments. This train is set up in an eight car set, but in reality, it's really seven and a quarter cars because this is an eight car train and it's, you know, one of the cars is just ends there and the rest of it is just baggage so it's really seven and a quarter cars <laughs> so let's get into the cab of this and start it up shall we now i don't know exactly what's going on with the airplane that's landing in the background but we have to basically start this train from cold Kind of similar to the M the M twos. If you have the M twos for um, Train Simulator, it's very similar to that. I'm just gonna turn the key there, and then set the reverser to forward, and everything should turn on. Yep, there it is. And then we're gonna turn that off. This train comes with a GM, a GSMR, which is where you can log in your train information. And it even comes with its own screen. And that little screen right there is actually pretty interesting because you put in a, a, a code. It could be anything, honestly, but you could put in a code. And then basically you have the option of checking any faults with the trains and whatnot. Um, you could add like train, um, 
information, destination signs. You can see if there's any faults with the train. I think I said that already. And the best part about it is, is that you can even um, have announcements for your trip. And the announcements are timed, per um, timed perfectly for the um, Gatwick Express. Now today, we got ourselves um, our eight car set in the back. This is what we have. We're about to open the doors and get the train going for the day. Just got to find the headlights to do it. There we go. We're going to turn it on to day headlights. Shut your mouth. I'm going to cut that off for now. Just because I really don't feel like dealing with it right now. You can call me a horrible person for doing so, but... Safety system isolated. <laughs> She's a horrible person. She went and turned off the safety system. Well, you know what? I felt like being lazy, okay? That's what the dark side does. Anyway... We're going to log in our information and we're going to get our train started for the day. By the way, may the 4th be with you. Um, today's International Star Wars Day. I don't know if you are familiar with International Star Wars Day, but it is pretty damn self-explanatory if you ask me. And the best part about it is, is that I just got into Star Wars not too long ago. Um, me and my boyfriend and my girlfriend... Me, my boyfriend, and my girlfriend decided we were going to watch all the movies in order from episode 1 to 8. We didn't have 9 yet. Including Rogue One. I didn't see Solo. Um, and I know there's another one that I had to see that was kind of like off the beaten path, but I saw all the episodes from one to eight and I fell in love with the movie. I really did. Anyway, while we're here, we're going to open up the doors for this train. The cool thing is, is that this train has separate door controls. The door controls for these, let's see here, because I have it written down. All right, so these are the right doors. This is going to be T-O. And there she goes. The doors are opening. This is going to be for the trip to um, London, Victoria. Matter of fact, let me type that in. London, Victoria is going to be code 92. So we're going to go to F2, which is train service number. And we're going to type in 0092. And once you hit enter, you're going to hear automatic announcements go off for the train. And F2. Isn't that pretty cool? Isn't that cool? <laughs> All right, now let's get this show on the road. We're due out at 04. 
So give me one second. I'm just going to set something up really fast. All right now we are about to take off. We're just going to hit the R button to close the doors. And off we go. Now, a little fun fact. They didn't want to put Gatwick Express on the side of these trains because they figured that some of these trains would be running Express all the way down to Brighton. So they just put Express on the sides, and they did the same thing with the Class 442 Piggies that um, replaced these. And off we go in our very Sith-looking train. Anyway, we're switching over tracks now, and we're about to go non-stop straight to London, Victoria, as I like to say, London Vicky. Um, and today is May 4th, International Star Wars Day. May the 4th be with you. Um, like I said, I got into... she done? Because I'm about to throw her ass in the Snarlack pit. Okay. Getting back to what I was saying. Um, so, I got into it a little too much. And I really like it. And it's something that I can see myself actually having a large fandom for, obviously. I try to do this whole, like, thing that I just threw together. I have the sun beating down on me, so if I look a little funny on the camera, I'm sorry about that. But, um, I gotta admit, I really like the story. I really like where it went. A lot of people don't like the prequels and the sequels, but I will say this. When it all runs in order, to me, it made sense. Especially because I saw a lot of the 2011 re-editions of the 70s movies. Especially the one where they, uh, video shopped Anakin Skywalker into the motherfucker. Yeah, I actually thought that was the real guy at first. And I'm like, oh, they actually picked an actor that looked like him. No. Turns out, um... That's like rule number one of Star Wars. Um, they went back and they changed that after the prequels. And you know what? I'm happy with that because as someone who started with the prequels first, yeah, cry for me. I, I, I fucking hated The Phantom Menace too. But um, as someone who seen the prequels first, it was nice kind of seeing the same actor that played Anakin Skywalker in like the ghost trio of Jedi's at the end of the movie in episode six. And that's one of my favorite movies in the in the series though. My all time favorite right now The Empire Strikes Back. How could you not see that coming? Which is kind of why I decided to pick this 
Darth Vader looking train. I mean, that's actually a common nickname for these two. That whistling noise they make is so nice. I love it. But it's kind of why I picked this train to begin with. It was like, you know what? It's a good idea to use this for a May 4th video. Makes sense, right? Might as well pick the Darth Vader looking train and then dress like a fucking Sith Queen. So that's what I decided to do. There's still a lot more learning I need to do with Star Wars, admittingly, but so far, I, I kind of like it. Alright, uh, let me slow this down before I start speeding. So, we're, since we're doing a whole Star Wars themed episode today, I thought I'd talk about a lot of things that I've learned so far with the Star Wars series. And one of them is, is that Jar Jar Binks is really not that bad. Unpopular opinion. I wanted the forcey fucking CP3O before I wanted to like do anything to Jar Jar, even though Jar Jar did give Palpatine ultimate power. Dick. But I never understood like the full hate behind him and then I was like, people were like, you know, there's a reason why he's not liked, and it has nothing to do with the actor that plays him, or the how clumsy he is, or whatnot. Somebody insinuated that there was something racial behind it, and that they kind of gave Jar Jar, like, lines that sound similar to what a slave would say. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's what I would say for that. I feel like that's a stretch. But at the same time, I understand. There is some things that he did say that did kind of sound like a racial stereotype. But a lot of the prequels is racial stereotypes, in case you haven't noticed. You have aliens speaking like Asians. I never understood that. You know exactly who I am talking about, too. They sounded like samurais when they speak when they spoke. And it was actually kind of like really noticeable and it actually kind of pissed me off after a while because I was like, all right, we get it. They're supposed to be some kind of oriental, but why such emphasis on the accents and the way they carry themselves? Like, I feel like this is kind of like a slap in the face to, like, Asian Americans, but that's just me. I'm weird. But they did make um, The Phantom Menace a little bit more bearable, believe it or not. I didn't like The Phantom Menace for many reasons. Same reasons why a lot of people don't like it. Too much CGI, a lot of politics, a lot of drawn on like conversations that really didn't need to go on as long as they did. But my more, more of my problem lied in the fact of how they kind of made this kid out, like, you know, the kid who played Anakin, they made him out to be, like, the next hope and whatnot. Okay, I get that. You know, that's part of the story. But the kid through the whole film looked like he wasn't really sure of what the hell he was doing. And I know he got a lot of flock for that in real life, and he ended up quitting acting because of that, but... He 
really didn't show interest like he wanted to be there. All of his facial expressions, the way he carried himself, it looked like he wanted to be somewhere else, honestly. And I don't blame him. You're a nine-year-old kid on a set of a movie that's really more for grown-ups than it is for kids. I mean, I don't care how much Disney will Disney up the movie. Star Wars is really more for grown-ups anyway. I mean, motherfuckers are getting sliced in half with laser swords. What do you think is going to happen? And that's another thing, too. Um, Disney seems to not know what the fuck a lightsaber is. I noticed that they referred to the lightsaber as a laser sword a lot in the prequels and sequels. And I know that it's a nod to George Lucas because he originally wanted to call it a laser sword and I forgot exactly what happened, but lightsaber ended up becoming the final name for it right before they started filming A New Hope. But... It's a lightsaber. We were all grown to like be told that it's a lightsaber. And, you know, they didn't do it as much in the prequels as they did it in the sequels. The sequels are big-time offenders for that. I think it was something along the lines of Luke Skywalker himself referring to it as a laser sword that pissed a lot of people off. You have him sitting on a mountain, an old hermit now, after this young hopeful kid from freaking... New Hope and Empire Strikes Back and, you know, Return of the Jedi. You got this, like, ambitious kid who just reunited with a sister that he didn't even know he had and made friends with Han Solo and Chewbacca. And they're going around on space adventures and then all of a sudden he's a hermit. I didn't think everybody had a problem with that, but my biggest thing was... He gets the lightsaber back from Rey, and that he still has the audacity and the balls to call it a laser sword. This place can be a little rough. I'm ready for anything. And I'm just like... We watched you, Luke. We watched you actually sit there back in 1979. Well... Older people watched you. I, I watched you the other day. <laughs> Sitting in that damn freaking um, hole in the ground in Tatooine. Pulling out the lightsaber. While fucking Obi-Wan Kenobi told you what it was. He actually said it too. That's your father's lightsaber. What the fuck you call it a laser sword for? I'm oh, gonna blow your shit up just for fucking doing that. I wasn't the biggest fan of um, Kylo Ren. I really didn't like him. A lot of people say that Anakin Skywalker was whiny and bitchy through the whole prequel. Nah. Kylo Ren may have a cool mask and a cool voice behind the mask and whatnot, but, um... He's still a little bitch. I mean that wholeheartedly. And I'm not saying this because... Spoiler alert. Um... He lightsabered fucking Han Solo in his stomach. I'm saying that more because he literally is an emo. Motherfucker looks like fucking... He could be the third member of Blood on the Dance Floor with fucking Dami Rapity and fucking... Jay Monroe. Feel bad for Jay Monroe, but I also don't feel bad for Jay Monroe. Oh, did you guys hear about Dami Vanity wanting to come back into the spotlight again? Good. He's not worth your time or your money. I 
anyway, getting back to the point, Kylo Ren is a little whiny duppy bitch, and I kind of didn't like him. And I thought he was kind of creepy. Especially using the force to contact Rey after he gets out of the shower. Why does he strike me as the type of guy who, after five minutes of hanging out, he uh, exposes himself and says, come on, just touch it. He strikes me as that kind of guy. Nothing I can't stand more than a come on, just touch it guy. What the fuck is this, Busted Rhymes? Touch it, bring it, pay, watch it, turn it, leave it, stop format it. Yeah, I know it's originally from a Daft Punk song, but... We all know what Buster Rhymes did to that song, and we all know what Buster Rhymes meant when he put that in his song. Anyway, my point about Kylo Ren is, is that I feel like he's a little whiny for no reason. And I feel like he needs to be a little less whiny and more Darth vader -y. Because, let's be honest, Vader was the best villain in Star Wars of all time. And that's how I feel. I liked Vader. I liked the fact that he was, you know, redeemable in the end. But at the same time, I also loved how ruthless and evil he was. Kylo Ren may have wasted, like, a whole town after holding them hostage for fucking information from one person. But Vader blew up a fucking planet, bro! Oh, Kylo Ren blew up four planets! Yeah, one of them was inhabited. And, you know... He kind of did that as, like, a warning shot. I don't even think any of them were really inhabited, because we didn't really see any, like destruction like we did with, you know, Alderaan, where we knew Alderaan was very populated. I mean, we all felt the disturbance in the Force, as if a million voices cried and then all of a sudden were silenced. But this is one character who is far more ruthless than Kylo Ren's bitch ass will ever be, is the Emperor Palpatine. Snoke ain't shit. I said it. Snoke ain't shit. Palpatine. That motherfucker gave me nightmares. And I like the nightmares. I actually, was the one time I actually enjoyed a nightmare. It was bad because, you know, I was in the middle of it, but... It, it was a nightmare that I actually enjoyed because it was like, oh shit, it's Palpatine. What's good? I enjoyed his character. But what I enjoyed most about Palpatine was his ruthlessness. He was more evil than Vader. And he kind of really made Star Wars, like at least the original series, what it was. I know in the prequels they build him up to be this like, you know, political figure that over time was playing both sides of the coin and whatnot, but he wasn't even as ruthless then 
as he was in the original trilogy. And that motherfucker murdered a bunch of Jedi at in the end of, you know, the prequel series. Execute order 66. You know, Palpatine, why not call it, you know, order 86? That could be a good idea. Alright, I already see a small problem with these trains. I gotta learn the brakes a little bit better. They're not grabbing as good as I thought they would. We're getting a little bit closer to London, so now you're going to see possibly more AI trains as well as more buildings and a lot of trackage and stuff, so the frame rates might drop, just a heads up. And if they do, they do. So... Kylo Ren's a bitch. Palpatine's the dude. The brakes on this train needs to be learned a little bit better. But otherwise, not bad. We have to slow down to 30 miles an hour in order to pass through East Croydon Station, which is something I never really understood too much. Might as well stop there if we have to go through this slow. It should be 45 through, honestly, and I would honestly fight for that if I had the chance. <laughs> Back in the day, the Gatwick Express did stop at East Croydon, as well as Clapham Junction. It's just over the years, not many people got off at that stop, so instead, they decided to use um, the train to just go through and not stop at the stations. Especially with Clapham Junction. Clapham Junction already gets served by a lot of trains. So when you have one train stopping, it kind of creates this domino effect that kind of has trains kind of like going in like a conga line where they go, stop, go, stop, go, stop until it's their turn to stop at the station during rush hour. And this for this train, it makes a lot more sense for the train to just go through and not stop. Its main purpose is an airport shuttle, right? Is that a ghost train on the right? That's a ghost train on the right. Fucking ghost class 700s. I don't know neither. So now we're leaving the Thameslink main line and we're going to go on to the Victoria main which will bring us into Victoria through Clapham Junction. Thameslink is off to the right there and then we're going up on the left following the southern tracks. These trains, um, the 460 Junipers they were built by Alstom, though here they're called Easton. <laughs> Palpatine 
parody of Alstom, but Alstom built these trains. Um, I forgot exactly when, but I'll put the year on the bottom. And they built them like this specifically for airport service. The problem with that was, was that they weren't mechanically reliable at all. So it actually took a little bit of money to get them converted back into passenger coaches and they ended up running local service for Southwest trains as class 458s which match their also class 458s that run on the Southwest system and you can tell which ones are the class 460s or what used to be 460s because they have frameless windows The ones that weren't on the Catwick Express, they have um, framed windows. And they do run them together in the same train, and you will see that. They don't do it. Um, they do have a couple of trains that are full Forber Gatwick Express trains, but they also added. Um, an extra car to each set, so now it's a 10 car set instead of an 8 car set. As far as I know, these baggage compartments on these trains were converted into passenger compartments. And I don't know why the fuck a Thameslink train is doing over here, but, um, wrong railroad, bud. Unless Thamesley got disrupted and everything is running this way. That would make no sense though. Alright, I gotta stop fucking around. Let's like get this train back up to 70. Huh, this train's gonna be late coming into Victoria. And you know the Empire, they don't like lateness. So, I'm one of those people who um, has a crush on Princess Leia. Even after all these years, I saw her in episode 7 and 8. I have yet to see 9. Please don't ruin it for me. But um, I have yet to see episode 9. But I've seen 7 and 8. And even then, I was like, she aged like wine. I kind of like that. <laughs> She went from being, like, the hot princess that you want to go and save to that good-looking grandma who you know, you know, used to look good when she was younger. And even though she's a little bit older now, she still may have some goodies down there. If you're into that kind of stuff. But, um... Yeah, I have a big crush on Princess Leia. And to make matters even better, my girlfriend kind of sort of resembles her. Just a teeny bit. Just a smidge. So, it's actually kind of cute. It's kind of hot, actually. I already told her, I was like, one day I want you to cosplay as Princess Leia. And she's like, sure. She goes, which one? Do you want me with like the, 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 the buds and the hair like that? Or did, did you want me like in Jabba's palace? I was like, what do you think?
Because they sell that costume. Like, they actually sell it as a legitimate bathing suit, too. You just gotta find it. I think it's like on eBay or somewhere, or XD. But it's out there. Oh, and she would look good in it. Because she got the body. She got the body like Leia. Just a really tall Leia. Because my girlfriend's fucking six feet tall. That's the word. Oh na na. I really like this train a lot. It it it, it is definitely something different. Coming up to Ballum Junction and Clapham Junction. Fun. I like how quick this ride is if you do take the Gatwick Express because it does take exactly 30 minutes to get between. London, Victoria, and Gatwick Airport. So, it's actually really convenient and fast, and it's a non-stop shuttle. And if you fly to um, London via Gatwick, I suggest you take the Gatwick Express into London instead of paying money for a cab or something. Um, it puts you in Victoria. Victoria is basically in the center of London. And if you need to find yourself, like, a hotel or something, that's basically where most of them are. Is, like, either in the center or by the airport. And you don't want to stay in an airport hotel, do you? Airport hotels are for, like, cheap meetings with, like, hookers you haven't seen in God knows how long. Because Mary doesn't give you the whole hoochie anymore. I should be banned from this platform. So did you hear? Giant hornets are in the United States. If you don't know what those are, take a yellow jacket and give it meth and toxic waste and then watch it mutate into these freaking things that are as long as my fucking finger. And apparently, they can kill you if they sting you enough times. Because the venom in them are almost as potent as a rattlesnake, and they have this big, long, two-inch stinger that is not barbed in any way, so it can continue stinging you over and over and over and over and over and over and over. Yeah, um... Australia, come get your peoples, because I'm pretty sure this is your peoples. Actually, they're from China, and I would like to, you know, believe that, you know, great things come from China and whatnot. But China's also been known as, like, the origin of coronavirus. 
doesn't mean that people should go out and attack Asian people in the street. Please stop doing that. I really wish you would stop doing that. They're, it's not their fault what's going on. Um, but we all know it came from China. China is trying their hardest to deny it. Because they don't want to take any responsibility for it. And right now the world is still shut down as we speak. It is May 4th. And we've been on lockdown since February. Well, really March. Really March. We've been on lockdown since March. But it sucks because you really can't do nothing. You can't really go nowhere. So the best thing you can do is sit at home and watch Star Wars movies all day. And play Train Simulator. I like the way these look in the sunlight. For some reason, this train carries a level of realism to it that's like... I haven't seen much trains on this platform other than like the Repo M2s. I love the M2s. They're, they're pretty great. Then again, I like anything that's Metro North. Speaking of Metro North, um... I might take these on a joyride on Metro North. Thinking about it. We're coming into Clapham Junction. We're not stopping at Clapham Junction, but we're going to go past it. And this is how you know we're kind of really close to Victoria, too. Because Clapham Junction, I think, is only like the third or fourth stop after Victoria. Or second, actually. Tell me that's not another Thameslink one. Thameslink, what you doing? Did you get rerouted or something? Oh no, that one's First Capital Connect. Still not in its right territory though. The sun is finally going down where I am right now, and I'm not going to lie, I kind of want to make a Wawa run just so I can grab creamer for my coffee, and I'm dressed like a Sith Queen, so I want to see the look on their faces when I come in like this. Slowing down to 45. The brakes are not bad on this train, but they could be better. I think the M7 probably has worse brakes than these. And I'm not going to lie to you, I'm not a biggest fan of the M7s because they draw so much energy out of the computer, it's not even funny.
if you continue going straight, then you'll end up in London Waterloo. We rise up and then do like a question mark tail over the Waterloo Main Line, which is the Southwest Main Line, which is Southwest Trains or Southwest Railway. That's so pretty. I'm not gonna lie, this train is very pretty. I love the way it looks. I wish it still looked like this. It, it doesn't anymore. They took off the Darth Vader ends. But it's so nice and I wish that, you know, it was more appreciated in Train Simulator. Because you see a lot of people do the Gatwick Express and, you know, they do this train mainly for the shock value of it. For like one video and then leave it alone. I've operated this train a couple of times. I still need a little bit more practice with it. But so far, it's not bad. We're coming up to Victoria in a minute, so the announcement for Victoria should be going off any second. I wish I had some money right now for a slice of pizza. Like, dead ass. By the way, I'm going to start a new thing here on this channel. If you guys would love to support me and help me out with any types of expenses and whatnot, as well as, you know, help me earn money to get better camera equipment and computer equipment for, you know, myself, since this computer obviously is on its last legs, you can donate to my Cash App. I am going to put the Cash App link below. You can donate to my Cash App at any time, any amount you'd like. Just make sure you leave a nice little note saying, you know, thank you for your wonderful YouTube content or something like that. You know what I mean? Or don't leave a note at all. Just donate and be anonymous about it. And honestly, every time you help me out on this channel, you know, I'm going to shout you out in the corner or maybe at the end of the video somewhere, I'm going to shout you out. So that's a benefit of helping me out. You get a little bit of recognition with me shouting you out um, and giving you a personalized thank you because, you know, I really do appreciate it when fans do help me out. Especially you guys, you guys have been rocking with me for some time. So I'm gonna drop it here somewhere cash at the morgue spelt like morgate um and if you want to help me out and maybe even i can earn my slice of pizza or something let me know because honestly i would love a little pizza right now <laughs> dead ass i'm not even joking i i i am really hungry out of nowhere I think after I'm done with this, I'm probably going to, like, smoke a joint and watch The Phantom Menace again. Isn't that so cool? 
I wish, like, the announcements were GPS-based, but they're actually timed. But, um... Even though because of the frame rates it wasn't 30 minutes, in the game we have traveled exactly 30 minutes and we are on time. Surprisingly. Welcome to London, Vicky. Slow down to 15. All right, as we're going in, I'm gonna swoop down, drone style. This is the best way I could, like, track my trade and stop at the buffer perfectly. We might miss an announcement, but I already proved my point with the announcements. And excuse me, that was a little rude of me. If I take a screenshot, forgive me. This is so pretty. London Victoria is a beautiful station for a station that's like, you know, partially covered. You know, I wish Penn Station could look like this. Penn Station looks like a dump. Okay, train, you're getting me nervous. Train. 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 You're, you're getting me nervous. Okay, that's actually not bad. And doors. London Victoria, last stop. All right. Thank you guys once again for riding with me. It's been a wonderful time. I love doing the Gatwick Express. It is a fun little ping pong shuttle. But um, I had fun doing the Darth Vader train. And if you want to see more content, I'm promised to film some more content. I know I've been really slow on that and I apologize. This is Darth Morg signing out. Conductor Squishy agrees. Woo!